Hey, everybody. We're back today with uh, more movies for you from the 2010s. We're looking at uh, the years 2010 through 2019. And uh, I'm here with, of course, Brian, AYBL Main, Sean, a.k.a. Doc, our regular guys. And we're going to uh, take a look at these movies. We're going to do our first category today, which is action adventure. We always start with that one. So, Brian, Doc, how you guys doing today? Doing good. Good. Doing good. good. Doing good, Rich. Glad to have you here. Make sure you sub AYBL Maine. He recently went over the 100 mark. He's got a contest going, uh, celebrating his 27th anniversary. So check that contest out and sub him up while you're at it. All right. Uh, our order today is going to be Brian, Doc, and myself. So we're going to go with our top five films in this category, starting with Brian. All right. Uh, so I guess I'm coming out of the gate pretty hard. I know uh, how much of a fan of you that you are of this guy, Rich. Uh, number five, I've got John Wick. Uh, Keanu, <laughs> Keanu Reeves is coming right out firing. And they actually have a website that actually clocks the number of hits he has per shot. He doesn't miss very often in this film. <laughs> he doesn't at all. It's kind of it's kind of hilarious at some point, you know, how many shots he takes with his gun. But it's it's just about a guy. It really, it's almost like a country western tale is that he's a guy who lost his wife they kill his dog they steal his car wow. and, uh, and then he goes on this rampant killing spree because he was an ex-hit man uh, throughout the russian mafia so um i got that at number five it, it, it's worth the watch i like keanu reeves in that movie and i don't like him very much number four <laughs> i got ready player one uh a spielberg movie uh kind of an adventure flick it's a little bit of a, a mixture of live action and uh cgi where uh, these uh, characters can log on to a video game. And uh, basically what they're doing is they're vying for the opportunity to win this grand prize, which ends up actually being the owners of the company itself. Uh, so you, you'll see all sorts of stuff uh, from uh, film history, like they have the, uh, the uh, DeLorean from uh, you know, Back to the Future, and they have the Iron Giant, and all sorts of anime characters and things that you would normally see in other movies. They're all featured in this film, and it's kind of cool to kind of pick them out as a as you're going through the movie, going, yeah, I know that, I know that, I know that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, number two for me is Mad Max: Fury Road. That was uh, excellent. I didn't th I didn't think they could really redo that movie at all and do yeah. it any justice. And I thought they did a tremendous job on that. Tom Hardy as Mad Max is great. A little bit more loony than Mel Mel Gibson's character was, which I like. It's got Charlize Theron in it. She plays a uh, uh, the th the Furiosa girl, who's uh, basically she's the you know she's uh, rescuing all these uh, women who are all these brides of this crazy psycho guy named Joe <laughs> of, all, of all names for a villain. His name is just Joe. <laughs> Joe. So, uh, uh, and uh, it's about their trek across the desert, obviously, and of course it's great chase scenes and bike scenes and explosions. The typical what you would think you'd get from a Mad Max film. Uh, number two for me was Inception. I put this in this action category because it did have a little bit of action that was uh, kind of interplayed with this nice little narrative. Just a great concept. For some reason, you know, no one just likes flipping us on our head all the time and making us think and make us feel like we're lost all the time in his movies. I think he just gets a kick out of doing it just to see if he can do it to us. Uh, you know, about a group of guys who can enter your dreams and, and uh, you know, pick out information or and, and things like that. So uh, it's it's not it's not hard to explain. It's really hard to explain. So I just suggest that somebody goes and watches it, and then even then, at the end, you're really not going to understand what's actually going on in the film. <laughs> uh, number one for me though was uh, I don't know why I like this movie so much. But the Accountant, Ooh. the one with Ben Ooh. Affleck and John Berthal, where the, he's a you know he's a, a guy with a ADHD and OCD and he's Asperger's and everything else. And uh, he seems like this unassuming guy who's just an accountant that takes care of things. But what he, what he really is capable of doing is some pretty horrific things when he actually sets his mind to it. Cause his, his dad was a, was a military guy and realized that because of all those things he was going to be picked on. And uh, he always, he, he taught him all these various skills that he would need to survive out there in the world. And, uh, 
later on, I don't want to give away too much in, into the actual narrative and the surprises in the movie, but later on, you know, he, he runs into somebody who's you know, a little bit as, as tough as he is. And I'll let that narrative play out for you, but it's got John Berthal in it. The guy from uh, that played the Punisher in the Marvel series. And John Lithgow is actually in the movie, which I always enjoy seeing a movie with John in it. Mm -hmm. So a uh, little bit. Uh, yeah. I, I debated this one for a while, but for some reason, if this is a movie, if I'm flipping through the dial and it's on, I will stop and watch it from that point forward. The accountant. So. Nice job. Yeah. I have to say, in all honesty, I haven't watched John Wick because of the uh, Keanu factor. And uh, <laughs> I haven't seen The Accountant, although it's on my to-do list. So I will catch up with that eventually. And one of the others on your list made my list. So I'll leave it at that. Good. And we'll go over to Doc. Well, I've got, uh, I've got two, Brian. I've got two, buddy. So um, three, but that's a, different, that's a different neighborhood, I guess. We'll see. <laughs> but the third's a different neighborhood. <laughs> uh, so yeah, good choices i liked your ready player one and i like the account i like both of those movies so uh they were on my a list before i cut down I, ready player one almost made my list to be honest with you all right so i'll jump in my number five is going to start off with the edge of tomorrow actually so um i like the flipping flopping of resetting and going back and actually you know uh getting something if you've seen the movie uh I get on with source code. I think it's the other one right. with yeah. Jake Gyllenhaal. But that's this is done to a different level. This is the up a tier in that, in my opinion, from even the same concept of what's actually happening in the movie. I just find Edge of Tomorrow is a a really good action movie. That it's, uh, it's like Groundhog Day <laughs> with a lot more guns. <laughs> hey, there you go, there you go. And you know, Tom's maybe you know, Tom's you know, you don't have to like Tom to like this movie, you know, because he gets killed quite a bit in this one. So uh, <laughs> he fights it pretty good a couple of times. So uh, number five is coming in with the edge of tomorrow. Number four, shouldn't have killed his dog, man. It is John Wick. It's uh, <laughs> uh, Rich. I highly recommend watching this movie, man. This is I might a have to. Action movie. <laughs> it's so, good. You guys are putting the gun to my head, flick. man. I might have it to. It is a good flick. When the bad guy is saying that John Wick's character is the character that you send to go kill the boogeyman, you know, this guy's <laughs> yeah, a killer, man. Exactly. <laughs> John Wick is a great action flick. Uh, it is nonstop in some senses, man. It goes and it's uh, violent as hell. Then there has to be, Brian, you touched on it, man. There could be like, I don't know, 200 deaths on this man. I don't know how many deaths. I mean, he's killing everybody. I, I only know the beginning scene in his house. I know that there were 24 guys who came after him and I bet <laughs> you he didn't fire 26 shots to kill them all. It was just ridiculous. <laughs> it was great though. Was like, wow. It's fantastic, man. It's fantastic. <laughs> It's really entertaining, Rich. You should check yeah. it out. All right. right. If I you will. haven't seen it out there, you should definitely check it out. This is your this is your neighborhood. You'll like it. Okay. Uh, number three for me. I think you guys found out the last time we did these things. I do like my James Bond. So, um, I really debated between. I was gonna, I was putting a Bond in here. I'll tell you that right now. So was that going to be Skyfall <laughs> or Spectre? So, I actually went Spectre. Nice. Um, Spectre has been a criminal that's been or a nemesis or whatever you want to look at it in the James Bond scenario since the 60s, man. This organization has been around since that long and they've been really the nemesis of, you know, Bond and the MI6 and everything else that goes with it. So it's, I like the way it all ties in. I like the way that Batista is the bad guy in this movie. I like Christopher Waltz in this movie. It's, uh, there's a lot of good things. It's got the biggest explosion in the history of film in this movie. So, uh, Spectre is a really good Bond flick, man. So, like I said before, I don't think there's been a dog Bond with him doing it. I, I'll stick to that. Yeah. I, mean, I, I enjoy this one. I've only seen two of them, so. Pretty me? I've only seen two of, of the ones with Daniel Craig so far, so I'm, yeah. I'm kind of slacking in that department, so. Yeah, Spectre's worth a watch if you haven't seen it, right? It's definitely yeah. worth it, yeah. Uh, number two, I'm going into the Star Wars neighborhood, but I'm going Rogue One. That's good uh, to me, this is actually of the reboots that have happened in the Star Wars series. This is my favorite one. Um, and it's not close. I mean, if you know the Star Wars story, the original Star Wars story with, you know, the Death Star plans and everything else that goes with it, the backstory to that, that's what this movie is about. And 
yeah, you can even remember the sayings from the old Star Wars that a lot of people died to get these pan, the plans to us mm-hmm. in the original Star Wars. Well, now you're seeing how it actually happened. So I find the whole concept, I find everything about it. The backstory in there is that it was a great story. It's a great story to tell in the Star Wars you know, neighborhood. And I think it's, uh, it's a great action adventure movie, man. There's, you know, anything that's got Vader in it, it's going to get my attention, you know, eventually one way or the other anyway. So yeah. but that's my number two. My number one, Brian, you had uh, earlier on your list. It is Mad Max Fury Road, man. This is um, this is nonstop action. Mm-hmm. You want the truth? You're sitting there for two hours and change, man. You this is this movie's a. Uh, we talked before about the fugitive until the train scene happens, if you recall. <laughs> you yeah. know, once it gets going, man, that yeah. movie goes. This train scene is like in the opening credits, man. This <laughs> is like it goes and yeah, it does not stop. Fury Road is, you know it's shot really well and everything else like the cinematography and everything else in this movie man this is you know you got flaming guitars you've got everything crashing (laughs) explosions this is you've got um tom hardy and charlize there in a non-stop action movie kind of the pick of the decade for me man in the action adventure flick man george miller man it's it's really good (laughs) yeah it's a strong one i have to agree It made, it made my list. Not quite number one, but it'll get there. At my top five, I've got an unusual pick at number five. Life of Pi, directed yeah. by Ang Lee. I really enjoyed this uh, little movie about a, a Indian young guy named Pai Patel. He tells his story to a novelist, how he survived a shipwreck at age 16. He's adrift on the Pacific Ocean uh, with a Bengal tiger in a little... Uh, boat that he's on great cinematography of the ocean and the, the animals around and great editing uh, i loved everything about it special effects that are used uh, i this one snuck up on me i really didn't expect to like it i put it off for a couple of years and i finally watched it it was nominated for best picture as well uh, number four this could go in the crime category but i put it in the action adventure uh, category and that's sicario from 2015, Emily Blunt and Josh Brolin and Benicio Del Toro. Uh, Kind of a dark, uh, deceptive kind of movie. It's a step-by-step look at uh, the FBI, the CIA, the drug cartels, informants. Uh, It's really well put together. I watched it again the other night just to make sure it was going to make the the list. Kind of the inside-out workings and what goes on behind the scenes and how they infiltrate the tunnels and they get their information and a real good screenplay nicely directed by Denis Villeneuve a French director good at action films uh, number three I had Drive starring Ryan Gosling starring Ryan Gosling Carrie Mulligan Christina Hendricks Ron Perlman Albert Brooks, Brian Cranston, a lot of Isaac, uh, what's his name? Oscar Isaac. A lot of uh, really strong actors in this. This is a very, very violent movie. Hollywood stunt driver who moonlights as a getaway uh, driver for criminals. That's played by uh, Ryan Gosling. He's got a relationship with his neighbor, played by Carrie Mulligan and her young son. Her husband gets out of prison. And uh, that leads to to more... uh, crime unfortunately this you don't see uh, you don't see albert brooks like that too often do you hey rich <laughs> he plays a heavy in this and he's a mean-spirited yeah. bastard let me tell you yeah. and he'll he'll cut your throat as soon as oh, yeah. blink at you you know number two i had mad max fury road like you both said it's non-stop it's really a masterpiece in action mayhem all over the place you got grenades you've got these motorcycles that are flying all over buses and Every kind of vehicle, imagine. Uh, it's shot in the outback, look of like Australian outback, outback of a, poke, a, poke, a post-apocalyptic, I'll get that out, in the desert wasteland. Uh, it looks like gas again is the, the big uh, commodity and water, very scarce. Uh, George Miller is a great action director. He proved that every time he makes a Mad Max film. And I love Charlize Theron in this role and Tom Hardy. They're equally... Uh, 
adept at uh, at bringing the uh, the mayhem, and they're both kick ass in their roles. Love it. Hardy's a really strong actor. Everything you see him, very in, good. He's great. He's he's I, like a chameleon in a way. I I don't really I wouldn't know if I could recognize him just straight up, but when he sinks into these roles and very effective. My number one, I went with the Revenant. Um, Leonardo DiCaprio and again Tom Hardy. Now, this is like a primal revenge kind of film in the early days of the American West. Fur traders, 1820s. Uh, Leo gets mauled by a bear and left for dead. Uh, they sort of just bury him, shoot him when he's down kind of thing. And he's intent on finding out who's responsible. I think he knows who's responsible. And eventually that comes to a showdown near the end of the film. You know, it's, it's again, it's great cinematography. You've got the landscapes. Uh, it's bloody, brutal. And ultimately it's about survival and uh, really effective movie. It won Best Picture, Alejandro Gonzalez Inarotu is the director. And I like the way he makes his films. He's done, yeah. I think 21 Grams is one of his films. And, yes, it is. Uh, yeah. The other one is uh, the one with Brad Pitt and Kate Blanchett on the, in the in the uh, Babel, is it called Babel? Oh, Babel. Yeah, I think he did that film as well. Yeah. He's a good director. So those yeah. are my top I was, five. And, I was uh, really upset that Tom Hardy did not win Best Supporting Actor for that role. I don't know. The who that year, but it just seemed like a farce that he did not get that. Yeah, he was nominated though, right? And he, he didn't win. Yeah, yeah, he did not win. Yeah, we have to look at that and see who won, but. They probably made up for for past Oscar uh, oversights. You know how they again, do that. yeah, again for the umpteenth time. So that was uh, interesting. That we the one film that we hit on on all three of our lists was Mad Max Fury Road. So obviously, that was probably the best action adventure film of that decade. Yeah, if we all hit on it. So very good. That was a good all one. Right. Good one. We'll be we're going to be back with our next category, which will be comedy. So look for that coming up. In the meantime, for Doc and Brian, I'm Rich. We will see you next time. Thanks a lot for watching. Take care. Ciao.